Okay, so we're going to work with Adobe Animate. We're going to make a top-down uh, piece of uh, game art. So this is, and specifically, we're going to make uh, an airplane. Uh, let me point out one thing, though. If you guys have never used do, 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 Adobe Animate before, if you ever hear to cartoonsmart.com, I'll actually hear just for the easiest thing to do, be go to the, either the illustration or the animation section, and then go over to, where did that just run off to? There it is, the uh, Adobe Animate CC Basics. Uh, that'll help you guys out. I might speed things along a little bit here just so I'm not constantly teaching only the basics. But uh, yeah, all right. So let's go ahead and, and fire this thing up. This is Adobe Animate uh, 2019. So that means that they've basically just moved things around just enough to kind of tick me off. And all right, I'm going to use the rectangle tool. You'll notice I end up uh, going back and forth between that and the uh, the selection tool a lot. Selection tool, I've got a hot key for it as A. And if you ever just see this magically light up, that usually means that I just hit the A key. All right. So uh, I'm going to just, just draw the fill shape right now. I'm not going to worry about a stroke. If I had that stroke turned on, you'd see yellow around this. So let's just go ahead and get rid of that yellow. And let's go ahead and make us the wings of this plane. Again, it's a top-down plane. So this uh, should be pretty darn easy uh, to illustrate because you know what uh, at the end of the day you can just kind of take half half the, the left side clone it over to the right side and you, you've got your planes so you're not making two sides of anything here uh, I'm hovering over to the uh, to the sides of the um, of the square and you, you notice you don't see any vector points or anything like that uh, but uh, I kind of like that. I like manipulating my art uh, without seeing those at times. Most of the time, if I did want to, I could always grab the uh, that white tool over there, and then you you know you get kind of an idea of where those are at. But uh, hey, you know what? Just call me a purist. I sort of like it as it is. Uh, and you can always tell if you've kind of landed on one of those vector points because see next to the cursor, it's got that uh, backwards L shape. Well, there you go. That's your indicator. All right. So if we want to make a uh, a new point in here, I could hold down the option key on the Mac. I believe that's the control key on the PC. And you can see I've just kind of pulled out another point. So now I've got a five-sided square. Just undid that real quick. And there we go. I'm going to get it to like right about there. And one of the reasons I might do this, I'm going to grab the magnifier tool, the zoom tool, and just zoom in on it. Go back over here again, just hotkey over there to the, uh, the black selection tool, is to just uh, basically bend out between those two shapes, right? So I can go in, I can go out, you figured it out, right? And I could do that between any one of my points over here. So you could see if I just kind of wanted to round out this entire thing now, you know, I could kind of bump this out a little bit. If I was going to do that, I'd probably go find that other vector point that's over there and move that out slightly. So it just got this kind of nice little curve over that way. And you know, you might want to do the same thing uh, somewhere around here, just create a new point. Kind of move this down a little bit and then again between those just kind of give it this nice little action going on uh one more time let's do it like right here i'm gonna move this one up just slightly and again so there we go we'll keep this kind of nice and straight all right so we've got what could potentially be one side of the plane over here I could select this, uh, I could hit the Q key, and uh, that's gonna get me over here to the free transform tool. Uh, by the way, the free transform tool hides some other useful tools if you pull down on it, but uh, let's not worry about those for right now. And so you can see I could kinda just squash, stretch, I could rotate this to all the things that you would normally expect from a free transform tool. Uh, let me kinda center things out again. Uh, so let's do this. Let's go and uh, go ahead and, and make the other side of this plane. So I'm gonna convert this to a symbol, or at least the, the other wing. And uh, I could do that by hitting F9 or F8. Uh, one of those two ought to do it. Well, not while I'm on the, not while I'm already selecting that. There we go. And let's just call this wing, okay? <clears throat> So I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy this. You'll notice it's got this little blue outline around it, which might be kind of hard to see, but there you go. So I've got, uh, I'm just copying and pasting. No special hotkeys there. Same hotkeys that are in every program, copy and paste. And I'm going to flip this guy around. So uh, one, the, the slowest way I could do this would be to go over here to transform and then just flip horizontally. And there we go. So we've got uh, both wings, kind of just making sure that they're... Uh, right level with each other. And one of the nice things about this now is that uh, I can make use of the fact that they're identical to each other, okay? Uh, so if I were to go and move this up and down, you can see I can start to make a, you know, a, both of them, oops, uh, both of them are, 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 you know, doing the same thing, right? So 
it's in some ways it kind of inspires you to a little bit to just see, hey, you know, all right, so this gives your plane a whole different feel. If this is up here, or this is down here, this almost makes it sort of a, a neat little boomerang, bring, boomerang effect, right? Uh, and let's uh, let's go ahead and give this a little bit of color to it. So I'm gonna just gonna double click into this box now. All right, this kind of bounding box that's. Uh, surrounding the entire shape i'm going to select the fill and let's give it eh, kind of like a military plane color nice little green so the plane if it's hiding in the desert <laughs> i mean in the jungle right um well, how come planes aren't all painted blue if they're if they're military right wouldn't that help them blend in a little bit uh okay so yeah i guess that's probably the right color right all right now what i'm going to do is go over here to the uh, the ink bottle tool and I'm gonna, uh, since I'm dealing with the ink bottle tool, this is actually gonna affect the stroke around it, uh, which it has none right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just set that to be black, right? And then I'm just gonna click anywhere inside of the fill shape, and that's gonna create this nice little stroke around it. Now, uh, I, this is a little bit of a wimpy line uh, at the moment. I'm gonna kick this up to about 10, okay? And now keep in mind, um, by the way, I. I I was inside of the wing there and just by double clicking anywhere outside of that wing just brings me back up here to the main scene. So, uh, you, you know, we're, we're kind of really seeing this magnified right now. Obviously, uh, in any sort of game, you're not going to see the, the wings as close up as this. They're probably going to be uh, much smaller. Um, so we got to kind of account for that and in, in, when, when we make our strokes around these shapes. Otherwise, because what happens is we don't want these to be too wimpy when they, they, they get shrunk down. And uh, here's a little kind of gotcha with, with this particular program. So let's say I were to go and shrink this. I'm just going to copy and paste another one. I'm going to shrink this down. Okay. Now, that line around it stayed pretty consistent. Okay. Um, relative to the size of it. All right, now if I were to go and copy and paste this, and keep in mind it, it's in this movie clip right now. If I were to break this apart, okay, so now I'm just kind of dealing with the raw artwork on the stage again. I can select the fill, I can select the stroke, right? And if I were to shrink that, watch what happens. So I'm going to shrink this down to the same size. You'll notice about the same size. You'll notice that the stroke uh, is no longer sized relative to the overall fill of it. So basically what happened here is the, the stroke is just saying it's staying the same, you know, kind of 10 stroke height, whatever it is, uh, around this smaller shape. Okay. Uh, but you know, that's, you, you can make use of that. Okay. Uh, and, and that's again, kind of another one of the reasons that we might want to, uh, go ahead and make some of these objects into movie clips. Uh, and that way we can kind of keep a copy off to the side, right. Or maybe, you know, two copies, right off to the side so we can keep an eye on, okay, if if we were viewing the artwork in the game itself, sized up for about game size, you know, imagine the whole screen's about that size, that's what the stroke is gonna look like. And, and, and seeing it now, I could even sit, think that this could maybe go up to maybe 13, 14 or so, get a little bit bigger. And again, because I'm affecting one of these, it's gonna affect all of them on the scene. So let's go ahead and just, we'll just leave that over there. And uh, all right, now here's another fun thing. Um, this is going to be a filter that we apply outside of the um, outside of the the interior of the movie clip. So when I put this filter on right now, just a drop shadow, uh, it's not going to affect all these other ones. So you know we'd have to go back and put the same filter on all of them. And you're probably not seeing that right now. Let's go ahead and kick the distance up. Okay, so I could take the strength down about like this. I've got this nice little uh, drop shadow. Uh, on our on our wing, which looks cool if the plane were you know in the hangar or something like that. If it was actually flying around in the sky, uh, that's no, that's unless it was flying like three feet off the ground, you wouldn't see the drop shadow. But check this out. What we're gonna do is click on inner shadow, and then I'm gonna swivel this around, and now this drop shadow has kind of just done the the work of us filling in a whole separate color inside of here to give it a little bit more depth, right? And what I'm going to do is just take the distance in just a little bit. Uh, once you feel like you've kind of got that right, I might even take the X and Y blurring all the way down. Now let's see the opposite of this. So if you want to kind of smooth it out like that, you know, you bump those up, the X and the Y. Uh, when I take them down to zero, you just get this nice kind of 2D shaded uh, line around that. Uh, so what we could do is we could go ahead and copy all filters and then select this over here, paste that. Uh, and you'll notice, uh, yeah, it, it 
pretty much goes on just like the other one. You know, you, know, you might want to adjust the angle a little bit. It just sort of depends. I probably, I would say, let's just try to make them both. Yeah, what I'm looking at right now is the amount of that over there on that one side. Uh, yeah, it looks about right. Okay, now um, I would say the rest of the wing is just going to be kind of like flourish on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to double click on inside of here. Uh, we're not going to see that drop show any, shadow anymore. That's okay. Uh, now let's let's take an actual line tool and let's kick this down to about seven. So about half of what that other stroke was. Uh, and then let's just, uh, again, it's, I, there's, I don't think there's any right or wrong inside of here. Great. There we go. Um, <laughs> I have to pick up a mattress apparently uh let's just uh let's just feel it out as we go uh so maybe a line across there maybe a straight line over this way inside of here this could be its own little thing over there and maybe a straight one like that so again just just kind of purely random paneling uh and then what i'm going to do is uh just so I don't intersect anything that's already inside of here. I might take this down to route here. Uh, you know, if I do that, maybe kind of follow along the edge. So anyway, well, what I was about to say is, just so I don't intersect anything uh, inside of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer on top of this, okay? And then you just hit that little button right there, new layer. And uh, let's just grab the circle tool and... Uh, what I'm going to do is take the stroke off of this so I can just draw just a plain old black circle. And I'd probably even make this into a movie clip too. So I'd hit F8, just call it something like black circle. And start laying these out sort of within here along the edges. And, you know, if it looks kind of big and silly, well, keep in mind, you got this, you know, Sort of our alternate reality version over there, or actual kind of the more real version of it. So you can see, all right, well, how's that going to look at that size? And and two, you know, we might want to copy these with the actual drop shadow and sync them down. Now this is this sort of does the opposite of what we um, had going on before, where it's uh, it, now the drop shadow is not affected. I mean, it's uh, I should take the the distance down on it because that's being applied to the the tiny shape so you get something like that happening right um but uh so somebody might be thinking well what should we really be working at when we design this whole thing should we be working small just to begin with or should we, should we be working big i'd still say keep working big because what you're ultimately going to want to do is probably export out at a larger size uh and then you know you, after the fact you could shrink down or something like that uh, okay, so, yeah, let's put a few more of these little, what are, what are we going to call these? I don't know. I would imagine, I'd, I'd imagine it's where some sort of bolt would go in or something like that. Uh, and then what you might want to think about doing is, uh, you know, putting some sort of color in here. So let's go ahead and, and try with another layer. Uh, again, this just makes it kind of easy if we want to undo things. We're not intersecting any of the, the artwork that we actually... Um, kind of committed to on, on those lower uh, layers. And well, hey, actually one thing we might want to try is just filling in. Oh, see, that filled in the whole green. Well, let's do this. Go back to that top layer. Let's try just putting in a line or a square, I should say, over top here. Something like that. That could look kind of cool. Uh, let's see how this looks outside there. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll just go with it for now. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we got some wings in there. Uh, you know, if it's a fighter plane or something like that, uh, what you might want to do is give some indication that's got, you know, weapons underneath the wing. And uh, that could be something that you actually maybe want to detach from the wing itself. Uh, if we're just being kind of lazy, though, uh, maybe we just go ahead and do it inside of this symbol that we've already got. So again, I'll make another layer. I'm just gonna drag this one underneath here. Uh, let's just go and sample that uh, same green color I had. I'm gonna then just click on that swatch, go over here, and then just take the 
uh, brightness down slightly so it's a little bit of a different color uh, and let's go ahead and set the line weight back up to something significant maybe 14 and then we'll just you know we could even do something as simple as like this a couple of these underneath there and maybe kind of move those ones up a tad and I'm going to lock in the layers just so I don't accidentally mess with them. And then maybe, I don't know, kind of point it out a little bit at the top. So I've just got the line tool now. Eh, that looks a little bit too much like a crayon. <laughs> let's, let, me, let me get rid of that. Uh, eh, let's see. Maybe grab a, the line tool again. Let's take it down a notch and then just do something like this. It's not going to look great, but... Oh, now here's an interesting thing. Yeah, okay, so look what happened. When I did that, It uh, that ended up affecting that drop shadow in there. So, you know, probably we should take these out of there if, if that's going to happen, or commit to actually kind of drawing or just shading in that, you know, basically doing what we did with the drop shadow but with actual fill shapes. Uh, yeah, let's take the easy wrap for now. I'm going to actually bend this out a little bit. And so uh, one quick way to kind of get rid of this uh, is just hit F8 on these. Uh, just call them under wing missiles. Cut them out. Go back over here to the top. And just make another layer underneath. And just put those guys under there. And I'd say to ultimately, we probably want to do that anyway, because, you know, this could be something that would be sort of fun to just, you know, if you had a separate animation for, you know, when this thing fires, Maybe you pull these back a little bit, go forward, pull them back, and you could kind of do even something like a very simple, um, uh, uh, kind of firing explosion. Oops, could work there. So, for example, ah, I keep hitting the wrong thing. Just something on the, underneath like that, you know, for a real quick second, kind of pull those back, shrink that down, and pull it back in, make that go up. Again, shrink something like that down. So, I mean, that, that's all it would really take to do some sort of firing animation on this. All right, so let's uh, let's do this. Let's go move those off to the side a little bit more. Let's uh, let's keep working on the base of this plane. What are we at time wise? That's a question. Seven. Holy cow! Seventeen whole minutes. Uh, maybe <laughs> I'm gonna quickly flip these around using my hotkeys. Uh, if you are curious, what I'm using for that. Well, there, that's it right there, whatever those keys are. One was the arrow for sure. Um, I think the other was the option key. Uh, should we take a break? Oh, I don't know. You know, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll spend another few minutes just kind of getting in the base of this plane. So again, I'm going to go ahead and switch back over here, hit that 14 for the stroke width on the square. Uh, I'm going to bump up a layer, and here we go. So kind of get the, again, just the, the middle part of that plane. Not sure what the technical term was, would be for that. And I'm sort of just eyeballing the symmetry of this. If I really wanted to make sure these are symmetrical, I could, I could basically just cut half of it off, right? And then just copy and paste in place again. You know, the other side and then just kind of bring it back together I think that would make it pretty darn symmetrical um, paste in place is a is a really useful um, hotkey at times so if you are over here under edit get to learn what this paste in place is guess what it's just your normal uh, paste uh, hotkey but watch this here. I'm gonna cut that off and then paste in place that's just holding down the shift key now and I'll paste it right back in place again I wish every program had that same very simple option to put in there to do that um, all right so again just some kind of simple flourishes grab the line tool let's take the um, take that down uh, I don't think we have to overthink this too much let's go we'll just do some lines across maybe you know what let me do this actually I'm gonna make this back part a little bit longer so I've just grabbed the free transform tool. I just selected this, of course, and then I'm just gonna kind of pull that whole thing down some. 
Uh, if something like that happens, I think your best bet is always to go over here to the snap tool and you just snap something like that back together. Nice way to repair things. All right, back to the line. Here we go. Let me go and just... Try to follow. There we go. And probably get rid of those there. <laughs> Which way do you think this plane is flying? <laughs> is that going to be the cockpit or is that up there? Uh, this to me is the back of the plane. <laughs> so if you, if you said the, if you thought the other way, well, you were wrong. All right. Uh, and then, you know, again, we could kind of take some of that yellow and it in wherever, wherever we think yellow should go okay maybe oh actually i guess i had that color yellow let's try to at least be consistent and again if we want to go and grab some of our little uh, black circles over here to kind of fill in random places um yeah, i guess at some point here here what i should do is i should take this middle part which is everything on this layer let me deselect that and then just make that into its own symbol middle of plane I, I don't like to leave just kind of raw artwork like that sitting around too long on the main timeline um you'll notice that this guy is 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 on the same layer as my kind of middle part of the plane but it's going behind here a quick way to fix that cut it off paste it back in place again and it'll bring it up to the top of the the stack so to speak the layer stack uh, where should something like this go Well, we still got a lot more to go on this plane, but it really hasn't taken us that long. Uh, one thing to think about kind of going ahead of time, or, or just looking at the future here, is, um, let me get rid of this, is how we could kind of tilt this plane to go back and forth. So right now we're kind of looking at it dead straight down, right? But, uh, you know, it'd be really easy to um, kind of make it so that this has a bit of a wobble to it as it flies. So if you go right, it's going to swing to the right a little bit and left, you know. Uh, to do that, it really all you got to do is um, let me grab one of these planes. I'm going to hit the Q um, key again, free transform, and I'm going to adjust the pivot point of this wing. So I'm going to put it over there. Uh, so basically just right up against the, I guess, hey, the hull, is that the name of it? The hull of the plane. And, uh, and then that way what I can do is I can... Um, when I'm using the free transform tool again, I can uh, skew and, and stretch from that pivot point. Otherwise, I would have done it from the middle. The same thing works for the rotate too. See how it's rotating from that point right there. Uh, but that way, so let's say I took all of these off of, of this layer, right? So I cut those off, went up here to another layer. Uh, so if I wanted to, again, tilt this, let's say to the left a little bit. So what you could do is you could kind of just move that over, right? And then just take all of this stuff well, here's another thing you could do to adjust the pivot. You can actually kind of temporarily adjust the pivot of multiple selected items at once. So if I got many things selected, so just holding down the shift key, right? I could temporarily adjust the pivot, you know, just kind of as I'm doing it. And you'll notice that when I kind of deselect these, none of them have actually had their pivot you know, permanently adjusted by doing that. And what I should have done is keyframe these so we could have gone back <laughs> and just kind of toggled back and forth to see how that looked. Uh, let's see, if we were going to do this, though, would that get longer? I don't think it would, actually. Um, here, well, you, you know what? There's a kind of a way to undo that. Let me go ahead and just copy all these, and then I'm going to hit the undo key just to go back to where we all were, all right? Is that it? I think it was. And uh, then what I could do is I could just hit F7 on all these keys over here. So they just blank out and then paste in place. Now watch this. <clears throat> okay, so it's not, uh, yeah, maybe without sort of like a thing in the middle of it, it looks a little odd and these aren't changing. But I think you kind of get the idea. So for example, if you did have something like didn't I say I was going to end this video a long time ago? If you had something like that there, and then, oops, then you move that over there. See how, see how you can kind of trick people into thinking, oh, that thing is is tilting. That definitely breaks the illusion, though. So you know that would be something to kind of address down the road. You know, but but then you know it's really just kind of kind of a matter of 
change, you know, we can duplicate that artwork and, and uh, fix it that way. Uh, the real question is, something here is not great. Maybe those move slightly too. But uh, yeah, I guess this will be a two-part video, huh? All right, I'll see you guys on the next one.